Excuse me. Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with exercise 2C of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 61 slash 62, and the, the question I'm going to do is number 20. Now, I'll just read it out first, and then I'll comment on it. It says a car has to travel a distance S on a straight road. The car has a maximum acceleration of A, maximum deceleration of B. It starts and, and ends at rest. Also, to, uh, we're asked to show that if there's a speed limit of V meters per second, then we'll say we're given an expression for the total time taken. Personally, I'm not great at manipulating formulae. Uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not good at it. Sometimes I think it's quite pointless. And uh, I'm not going to say that this exercise is pointless, but for that reason I find it difficult to do these. So you may, you may feel the same. I'm not too sure. So I'll do this question. I'll tell you how to approach it. Like I said, perhaps you might find things like this easy, but if you're like me and you find them difficult enough, then uh, perhaps listening to what I've got to say might, might, might help. So first of all, I've drawn a speed time diagram as normal. We're going to say the car accelerates at acceleration A up to the speed of V, continues that speed, and then drops down at deceleration D. Name the normal three areas, one, two, and three, the normal times. And uh, now, well, I suppose initially, well, why don't we assume that it goes constant acceleration followed by constant deceleration? Well, there's no reason for that, to be honest. You could assume that and see if you'll get the right answer. Uh, and I suggest that you won't. So you could try this one here, find out that it's incorrect. And then try the one where you also have constant speed, and that you might find that one correct. And other problems might be the other way around, where if you assume this one, you'll get it correct, and if you assume that one, you'll get it incorrect. And the reason for that is, is the problems don't tell you, you know, they don't tell you whether or not it, it uh, accelerates, then, then decelerates immediately or otherwise. So I suppose in some respects, you must guess. And anyway, that, to be honest, that's only a very minor point. So the first thing is, let's do our UVAST as normal for the three areas, one, two, and three. Like so. Now, we're trying to get an expression for time, the total time. So that, for that reason, in all of these these little expressions here, we want to r remove time. So what we want is like we'll say t1 equals, we want a t2 equals, and we also want a t t3 equals like that. So we can add them together. So we don't want time. We'll say in each of the expressions. So that's the most important thing. Remember what you're actually trying to find. You're trying to find the total time, therefore you don't want time, or you want expressions for it rather than have expressions in it. So we'll start with region 1. So as normal, it starts at 0, accelerates to V, accelerates at A. And we'll call that time T1, T2, T3. Region 2, its initial speed is V. I'm going to call that 2 like that, S2, S3, V3, 1, and 1, like that. Uh, its acceleration is 0, so that can, that stays at v, at v. And once again, this is V because that's the initial speed at region 3, drops to 0 and decelerates at a B. We don't know what B is. Now, just a little subtlety in regard, actually I, I won't discuss subtlety yet. So. We're going to, first of all, try and get an expression for this speed. Now, why is that? Well, we have, we have, for, we have, we know what the speed is, it's V. So if we can say V equals something else, and perhaps one of the parameters is time, then we're able to get an expression for time in, uh, in regards to velocity, which is what we're looking for, or speed, which is what we're looking for. So we know that V is equal to U plus AT. So, in this case, V1 is equal to U plus AD. So V, this V here, is equal to 0 plus A times T1. So V is equal to AT1. Or you could say T1 is equal to V over A. So that's the first part done. Next, we'll go for distance. By the way, we're told the total distance is called a parameter S. So we want, we want to be able to get uh, expressions for distance. 
So we're going to say s is equal to u plus v over 2 times t. So it's equal to 0 plus v over 2 times t1. So that's v over 2 t1. All right, we've done, we've seen that loads of times. Similarly over here. Now, the, we can't get an expression for the speed because it doesn't. There's no acceleration involved. So s2 is equal to u plus v over 2 times t. So that's v plus v over 2 times t1. So that's uh, v times t or t2. We'll say sorry. That's t2 like that. And finally, for region three. I'm just going to do region. Th I'll do the calculations down here, like that. So we'll say v3 is equal to u plus at is equal to. Well, we know v3 is equal to zero, and the initial speed is v uh, plus b times t3. So we know that we'll say minus v is equal to b over t3, or you could say t3 is equal to minus v over b. Like that. So let's note this up here. So how we say it? We'll say that b is equal to minus v over t3. That's the first thing. So b is equal to minus v over t3. That is correct. Next, we'll go for the distance. So s3 is equal to u plus v over 2 times t. So it's v plus 0 over 2 times t3. So that's v over 2 t3. So now we have all the information that we possibly can have. And what we need to do is manipulate those to give us what we're looking for. Now remember, what we're looking for is that we'll say t total is equal to t1 plus t2 plus t3 is equal to dot 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 in all the things in terms of a, v, s, etc. But rather, no t. Alright? So we want to get rid of t. So the first thing we're told is that s1 plus s2 plus s3 is called s. They just call it s. So let's do that. We'll say that alright. Now, like I said, we want to isolate time. If you look here can you see that? You can. We know what t1 is because t1 is v over a. We know what t3 is because t3 is minus v over b. Do we know what t2 is? The answer is no. So what we're able to do here is, using this expression, we'll be able to get it, we'll find out what t2 is. And how we'll do that is by getting rid of t1 and t3 by subbing in this, this expression and this expression. So we know that t1 is equal to uh, v over a. So we'll say v over 2 times v over a plus v times t2 is equal to v over, sorry, is not equal to, is plus v over 2 times t3 which is minus v over b. That's equal to s. So we have that v squared over 2a plus v times t2 minus v squared over 2b is equal to s. And look, we have t2 and every, all the other variables but no, no mention of t1 or, t2 or t3. So we're doing well. Now because I don't have much room, I'm just going to rub out what I wrote up here and continue on. So just rewrite that. We had v squared 2a plus v times t2 minus v squared over 2b is equal to s. So what we want to do is isolate t2 and get an expression for that. So what we'll do is bring everything over to the right hand side except for t2. So v times t2 is equal to s plus v squared over 2b minus v squared over 2a. Now if you want you can have a look we'll say at the answer on page 62 and see that we're getting close. We're seeing things that are similar. So finally we know that t2 is equal to s over v minus v over 2b, oh sorry, plus v over 2b minus v over 2a, like that. Alright, so now we have an expression for t2, an expression for t1, and an expression for t3. 
So I'll just note that up here in the corner. You don't necessarily need to see that. You can write that in your, in your copy if you like. All right. So what are we told? We're told that we want to get an expression for the total time. So let's do that. We'll say that T capital is equal to T1 plus T2 plus T3. All right. Once again, I'm running out of space, so in actual fact, right, let's rub out this bottom line here. That should give us a bit of space. So, what's T1? Yep, you can see that there. So, T1 is equal to V over A. Plus T2. Well, T2 is equal to S over V. Plus V over 2B. Minus V over 2A plus T3, which is minus V over B, and that's equal to, we'll say, capital T. All right, so we have no mention of time in here. We're doing well so far. So let's rearrange. V over A minus V over 2A is V over 2A. V over 2B, where is that now? V over 2B minus, or say, yeah, plus v over 2b, minus v over 2b is minus v over 2b, and plus s over v is equal to t, t total. All right, and there's your answer. Now, I'll talk about that subtlety now. So the answer in the book on page 62 says that we want to get v over 2a, plus v over 2b plus s over v equal to t tot. Now, what's the difference here? This negative sign. But what's b? b is your deceleration. d e c e d e c c I can't even spell deceleration, I'm sorry. Okay, well see here, it's, it's your deceleration. Now, what I've told you in the past is that, of course, we'll say a, a might be equal to 5, we'll say plus 5, because it's accelerating, and B might be equal to minus 6. But look, the minus, the, the sign is taken into account in the fact that you're using this variable. So this variable can be plus or minus, it doesn't matter. So you, the convention is that you always have variables as plus, because if the variable turns out to be minus, like say if we had... Say if you had something like this, um, minus b. Say that's what you wanted to find out, and you knew that b was equal to 6, or b was equal to plus 6. Well, then it would be minus, plus 6, and then you'll get minus 6, which is fine. However, if you wanted to do this, if you had minus b, you wanted to find out what minus b is, and say b was minus 6, you'd have minus times minus 6, and you'll get plus 6, which would be incorrect. So... It's easier and it's better for you to always have something as a plus. Use, leave your variables as a plus. So what's after happening here is the book, the solution done by the author of this book, has said at the start that this B is negative. So that would mean this here is positive and this down here will get positive as well. I personally don't agree with that. I don't think you should do it that way. They're the same answer, by the way. Because if you plugged in the figures, you would get the exact same answer. So like I said, I hope you understand this. If I haven't explained it correctly, uh, please make that known by a comment in the, under the video. But these are the same. And like I said, he's just said that B is negative, And I will strongly advise you not to do that. Always leave your variables positive. And when you plug in your numbers, well then it will work out. And just very quickly to go over it again. If I had that B was equal to 4. And A was equal to minus 3. And somewhere in an expression, I, wanted to, I had a minus be like this. So you go minus times plus 4 and you'll get minus 4, which would be correct. However, if you had minus a, then you go minus times, um, and sorry, we'll say this, minus, minus a was equal to 3 like that. That Because that's what he has there. Minus a is equal to 3. You'd write down plus 3. You'd, no, let me think. Oh yeah, you'd say a, minus a is equal to 3, therefore a is equal to minus 3. You put in minus 3 here, and you'll get plus 3, which would be incorrect. You want minus 3. 
So always leave your variables positive. Anyway, that's that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.